Hello. In this video, we're going to cover 13.2, which is limits and continuity. So we saw a tiny, tiny bit of derivatives. Like we saw the difference quotient. And we know from Cal 1 that we use the difference quotient to define a derivative. And that's like the long way of finding a derivative, right? Um, but before we can get to the actual derivatives, <laughs> We definitely need to talk about limits because you do have to take the limit um, of that difference quotient in order to get the derivative. Okay. So in this uh, assignment, it's not too many of them. There's eight actual problems to work out and then one that has a video um, for you to answer the question at the end. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this assignment and we'll see how far we can go. So this one says that the limit as x, y goes to a, b, whatever those are, of this function, I will get three, okay? It also tells me that the limit as x, y goes to a, b of g of x, y equals negative four. So then they're asking me to figure out what the limit as x, y goes to a, b of f of x, y minus g of x, y. So we're essentially just using our limit properties. So we know that for limit property, you can take the limit of each term individually and then add or, or subtract that, um, those values and you'll still get the same thing. So what happens is that this turns into this minus this. And so if you have that value minus that value, I know this value. That value is three minus, I know this value. That value is negative four. And so you end up with the value seven. Okay, moving on to number two. So for number two, this one says nine f of x, y over g of x, y. Now, as long as these are both defined at this point, right? If the limits are both defined, then you can simply just take out the coefficient and then multiply by the limit of f of x, y over the limit of g of x, y. Now, if g of x, y was not defined at this point, that limit was not defined at that point, you would not be able to do this, okay? Um, you would probably have to apply L'Hopital's rule, okay? But for us, we can do it. Now, they did give me a value for this limit for f of x. The value they gave me was three. And for the, den for the denominator, they did give me this value as well that value is negative seven. And so what do I end up with? I end up with negative 27 over seven. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to number three. So number three says you have this limit goes to 2, 1 of e to the x, y. And they're asking us to evaluate this limit and then to discuss its continuity, OK? Um, now, the limit part is super easy because we could literally just plug in the 2 for the x and the 1 for the y, and we get e squared as our value. 
Okay. But for the continue con continuity part, you really have to figure out what's going on. Um, for e, for e to the x y, um, we have to think about this in pieces. Okay. So we know that e to the x is continuous on the whole um, function. It's continuous everywhere within that function um, because x can be any real number and then you can always raise e to any real number, okay? Now, the fact that I have another, oh, another variable in there really doesn't affect the story because even, even with this product, that product could still be any real number. So it's essentially the same situation as if the y were not there, okay? Although what that number is at a certain point in time does depend on that y value, okay? So for this one, we would say it's continuous. And since there's no restrictions, it's just continuous everywhere. Remember what e to the x looks like? It looks like this. It's continuous from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity. So I'm gonna select the second option. Let's go see how we do. Okay, hey, that's my answers. Now let's go on to number four. So in this case, we have the limit as xy goes to one comma 66. And my function is x over the square root of x plus y. So I'm going to try to direct substitute. I don't think it's going to cause any issues with that de denominator. So I have x, which is 1, 1, and then 66. So I have 1 over the square root of 67. Okay. So I'm going to type in here what fraction 1 over square root of 67. And then for the continuity, we know that there's an issue with the house, right? And with the denominator. So we know two things. We know that the whole denominator cannot equal zero. And we also know that what's inside the radical has to be greater than or equal to zero. Well, if I set, if I square both sides of this equation, I get that x plus y cannot equal zero. But over here, you're saying x plus y could be greater than or equal to zero, okay? So if you put these two statements together, really x plus y can only be strictly greater than zero, okay? Um, and then that satisfies both of those restrictions. So we're going to say that it's continuous for whenever x plus y is greater than zero. Okay, moving on to number five. This one says the limit as x, y goes to 0, 0. And my function is x squared, x squared plus 1, y squared plus 1. So I'm simply going to plug in the value. So I'm plugging in 0 for x, 0 for x, 0 for y. And I get 0 over 1 times 1 which is just zero, right? So that's what I'm gonna enter in here. Oh, they're not even asking me for a limit on number six. Number six is just discussing the continuity. So if we have a function, and this one has got three variables, okay? So if we've got this, 56 square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared, okay? They're all in the denominator. We already know from the previous problem exactly what's going to happen here, right? We know that that bottom, the inside part, has to be strictly greater than zero because we know that the denominator cannot equal zero, but we also know that the radicand has to be greater than or equal to zero. And when you put those two statements together, you end up saying that the radicand has to be strictly greater than zero. So essentially, I'm just gonna do the same exact thing. Although there's three variables, it makes no difference. It's the same principle. 
So I'm going to say it's continuous everywhere um, that you have, that you meet that criteria. That x squared plus y squared plus z squared is greater than zero, okay? Um, and this one, it said I am wrong. Oh, I know why. I know why it's actually continuous everywhere. <sighs> why is that the case? Because isn't this always going to be greater than zero? I didn't, I just spaced on that notion. <laughs> but yes, right? No matter what x value this is, when I square it, this is going to be a positive number. And no matter what I get for y when I square it, that's going to be a positive number. And no matter what I do when I square this, that's going to be a positive number. Unless all three of these guys are zero, okay, this should be a positive number. What happens when all three, x, y, and z are zero? Well, then I have zero plus zero plus zero, which is zero, but zero is not strictly greater than zero, okay? And because of that, we're actually going to say it's continuous continuous everywhere except at the point zero, 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 because it's not strictly greater. It's equal to zero at that point. Okay. Now we can move on to number seven. And we got this one and one more left to do. So we have f of x, y equal to 2x squared plus 4y squared. So we have a the limit of delta x greater than 0, f of x plus delta x, y minus f of x, y over delta x. We've done this before, we just didn't do the limit at the end, okay? So let's go ahead and figure out what this is gonna look like for our particular function. So I'm gonna plug in x plus delta x and just the y. And then I'm gonna do the original function all over delta x. So here I'm going to end up with 2 times x squared plus 2x delta x plus um, delta x squared plus 4y squared, and then I'll distribute this minus, minus 2x squared minus 4y squared all over delta x. Let me scoot that over a little bit. My y is squared right here, okay? Let me make this a little bit shorter so I can make my paper a little bit um, wider so you can see everything. All right, there we go, okay. So let's go ahead and distribute this to Notice when I distribute the two, this will become 2x squared minus 2x squared. So those will go away. These will also go away. So I will still end up with 4x delta x and plus 2 delta x squared. And so then I'm going to factor out that common delta x in the numerator. And I'll end up with 4x plus the extra delta x in the second term. These will cancel. And I just have this expression. And then if I plug in 0, I get 4 plus 0, which is just 4. And so for here, I'm just going to type in 4. Oh, not 4, 4x. I only plugged in zero for delta x, so I get 4x. There we go. Now we're going to do similarly the same thing for um, x plus delta y.
So we have f of x. And then we have y plus delta y. Minus the original over delta y. So what do we get for this? We get 2x squared plus 2 times y plus delta y squared minus 2x squared plus 4y squared all over delta y. So then I'm going to write 2x squared plus 2 times y squared plus 2y delta y plus delta y squared minus 2x squared minus 4y squared if I distribute this negative. Again, if I distribute this positive 2, this will become 2y squared, which will cancel with this. Um, oh, no, it won't. Oh, I messed up. It's supposed to be 4, right? 4 is in front of y. So this should be 4y squared. So 4 times y plus delta y squared. So this should be 4 which means when I do distribute it, yes, this 4y squared will cancel with this negative y squared. So I will end up with Oh, and the 2x squared minus the 2x squared will also cancel. So I'll end up with 8y delta y um, plus 4 delta y squared over delta y. I'm going to factor out that delta y in the numerator. I'll end up with 8y plus 4 delta y all over delta y. These will cancel. I get the limit of delta y going to 0 of 8y plus 4 delta y. So that delta y will become zero. So I have 8y plus zero, which is just 8y. And so notice that when you're taking this, because this is the definition of a derivative. So when you're taking the derivative with respect to x, notice that the this term, 4y squared, was basically treated like a constant. And if you took the derivative of 2x squared, you would get this 4x. And the derivative of that highlighted constant would just be 0. So the answer is truly ultimately just 4x. Similarly, if you take the derivative with respect to y, this term, which doesn't have any y's in it, is considered the constant. And if you look at this one and you take the derivative of that term with the y, you get the 8y. So the derivative of a constant is 0. The derivative of the highlight part is 8y, and 0 plus 8y is just 8y. Now we're going to do the whole thing all over again, but it's a little bit more complicated because we've got some fractions in there. So let's see how we handle those fractions, and then we should be good to go. So f of x, y equals 8 over x plus y. And so they have the limit of delta x going to 0. And then I'm going to need a big fraction. So I'm going to have 8 over x plus delta x plus y minus the original 8 over x plus y all over delta x. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to multiply by the common denominator. So a uh, common denominator between these two will be x plus y and x plus delta x plus y. And so if I do that here as well, this will cancel this factor, this will cancel this factor. And I also have to do the same thing to the bottom. Okay, 
sum and the bottom doesn't have a fraction, so it doesn't cancel anything. So we end up with the limit as delta x goes to zero of eight times x plus y minus eight times x plus delta x plus y all over delta x times x plus y times x plus delta x plus y. Then if we keep going, we're gonna distribute those eights and negative eights. So we have eight x plus eight y minus eight x minus eight delta x minus eight y all over delta x, x plus y, x plus delta x plus y. So the eight x's and the eight y's will cancel. This term will not. So I will have negative eight delta x over delta x. And then these delta x's will cancel. And if I set delta, a, e, delta x equal to zero, I will get negative eight over x plus y squared, okay? Now, when we get to, um, I can kind of talk about it right now. So if I were to rewrite this as x plus y to the negative one, right, the f function, Okay, if I were to write it like that, you could use your power rule. So you bring down the power, then you decrease the power by one, and then you multiply by the derivative of what's inside. Since I was taking the derivative with respect to x, this guy's like a constant, so his derivative is zero. And then the derivative of x is one. So really I have eight times negative one times one, which is negative eight. And because that has a negative two exponent, it's actually gonna go in the denominator. So we're actually hitting some of the concepts in the next section, but it's okay. I just wanted to point it out, okay? Now we're gonna go do the same thing. I can probably figure it out just doing the same process because when I take the derivative, I get the same thing, right? You bring down the power, negative one, bring it down. Um, and I shouldn't put equals f prime is what equals this, okay? Um, f prime with respect to x. Now I'm doing f prime with respect to y. Again, we'll talk about the notation and all that when you get into the next section. But you bring down the power of the original, you decrease the power, and then you multiply by the derivative of what's inside. Now, since I'm doing the derivative with respect to y, this guy's gonna act like a constant, so its derivative is zero, and the derivative of y is just one. So I have eight times negative one times one, which is negative eight. And then this guy's got the negative two exponent. So I should end up with the exact same derivative, okay? Let's go do it the long way and make sure that we do. Okay. So we're gonna do the limit as delta y goes to zero. So we have eight over x plus y plus delta y minus eight over x plus y, the whole thing over delta y. Similarly, I'm gonna multiply by the common denominator to every single part of this um, fraction. So every single term, even the bottom. And then here, this will cancel, here, this will cancel. So I'll have the limit as delta y goes to zero of eight times x plus y minus eight times x plus y plus delta y all over delta y times x plus y times x plus y plus delta y. Then let's see what happens. We're gonna have eight X plus eight Y minus eight X minus eight Y minus eight delta Y. And then delta Y, X plus Y, X plus Y plus delta Y. Now, 
the eight X's will cancel, the eight Y's will cancel. When I'm left with just this on top of this denominator, this guy will cancel with this guy. So essentially I'm doing two steps in one, um, but it will reduce down to just the negative eight on top and then X plus Y, X plus Y plus Delta Y. And then when I make Delta Y equal to zero, you're just gonna get X plus Y times another X plus Y, like that's not there which is x plus y squared. So we did get the same exact derivative. So we're gonna type negative eight over x plus y squared. And I don't know if it'll let me copy that. Sometimes it doesn't, oh yeah, it did. Did it say no? Oh yeah, it's good. Okay, so that's it for this section. Again, we'll come back and pick up um, and do 13.3.